Long live the fighters of Moadib. Production on Dune Part 2 is now in full swing. Recently, there have been several significant details revealed about the highly anticipated sequel. So in this video, I'd like to discuss all that we know so far about Denis Villeneuve's conclusion for his adaptation of Frank Herbert's epic story. Filming had initially been slated for this summer or early fall, and it appears everything is proceeding as scheduled, as shooting has now officially begun. On July 18th, 2022, this was announced on various social media accounts connected with the film, posting the simple message, We're rolling, production on Doom Part 2 has begun. This was accompanied by a picture of a clapperboard with the words, Long live the fighters, along the bottom. The official synopsis from Warner Brothers and Legendary reads, This follow-up film will explore the mythic journey of Paul Atreides as he unites with Chani and the Fremen while on a warpath of revenge against the conspirators who destroyed his family. Facing a choice between the love of his life and the fate of the known universe, he endeavors to prevent a terrible future only he can foresee. Denis Villeneuve is, of course, returning to direct, while the screenplay for Doom Part 1 was co-written by Villeneuve along with Eric Roth and later John Spates, Eric Roth is not listed as screenwriter for Part 2, though it's likely some of what he had prepared for the first film may make its way into the sequel installment. In previous interviews, Roth confirmed that his original work on Doom Part 1 ended up covering a little more than the first half and started going into the second half of the book. He also reveals that he wrote a treatment to show the estate what they could do with the second half. And so based on this, I'm sure that some of his influence will be present in Volnov's second Dune film. When it comes to returning and new cast members for this next installment, there of course has been confirmation of the major players from among House Atreides, House Harkonnen, and the Fremen. Timothy Chalamet returns as we continue to follow the mythic journey of Paul Atreides, along with his mother, the Bene Gesserit Lady Jessica, played by Rebecca Ferguson. We last saw both mother and son as they were accepted by the Fremen people who have long made Arrakis their home. The Fremen have been molded by the hostile world, which has turned them into the desert power the heir of House Atreides utilizes to survive and to take revenge on his enemies. As stated in the synopsis, in line with the plot of the novel, the sequel is set to feature much more of the Fremen people. So we can expect a lot more from Zendaya playing the Fremen warrior Chani and Javier Bardem as the Fremen leader Stilgar. There's likely to be a lot of extras filling the roles of the various tribes of Fremen people, so it'll be interesting to see more of the casting choices for these smaller roles as the film draws closer to its premiere. So far, there has been one announcement regarding one of these desert warriors, featured in Part 2. Suhaila Yakub has been cast as the Fremen Shishakli. While the role in the book is small, it will be part of one of the most significant scenes in the film. In the novel, the character is male and is described as a squad leader of the Fadaiken, who are Fremen death commandos pledged to give their lives to right a wrong. Though his time in the novel is very brief, he takes part in a sacred ceremony involving the mighty sandworms of Arrakis, who the Fremen worship as Shai Hulud. For those who are unfamiliar with the novel in regards to the supporting members of House Atreides, whose fates were left a bit murky in the first film, Josh Brolin's return has been confirmed for part two as troubadour warrior Gurney Halleck, as well as Stephen McKinley Henderson's Mentat Master of Assassins Thufir Howitt. Returning as the ruthless and repulsive enemy of the Atreides, Baron Harkonnen, is Stellan Skarsgård, with Dave Bautista reprising his role as his fearsome nephew, Glossu Bistraban. Director Denis Villeneuve has already teased much more Harkonnen stuff for this next installment, which will also feature the Baron's favored nephew, Fade Rautha Raban, a role famously portrayed by Sting in the 1984 film. The character's introduction was saved for Denis Villeneuve's sequel installment, as the director thought there were already plenty of characters in part one, and Villeneuve felt that it would be more elegant to reserve Fade Rotha for this next entry. As the Baron's chosen heir, Fade is a main component of his schemes to feed his endless ambition and thirst for power. 
the Harkonnen heir proves himself to be a formidable addition to the antagonist of this epic tale. He is handsome and charismatic, as he is devious and cold-blooded. I'm very interested to see Austin Butler's portrayal of this fearsome foe, whose recent performance in the Baz Luhrmann biopic Elvis has received rave reviews from critics and general audiences alike. It has been revealed in the actor's recent interview with the New York Times that Butler is receiving intensive knife-fighting training in preparation for the role. In a previous video, I covered the character's key fighting sequences from the novel and how they may be adapted in Villeneuve's film. I'll leave a link in the description below if you'd like to learn more. Charlotte Rampling will be returning as well as the Bene Gesserit Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mohayim. This character serves in the Emperor's court as Truthsayer, while secretly working to enact the Sisterhood's own agenda to control human destiny. Speaking of the Imperial Court, the legendary Christopher Walken will portray the ruler of the known universe, the Padishah Emperor Shaddam IV of House Carino. Though the character doesn't make a physical appearance until much later in the novel, his power and influence are certainly felt throughout the story. To highlight this point, previous adaptations have increased the character's screen time, and considering the casting choice, I can't help but suspect that Villeneuve will follow suit in his own interpretation. Florence Pugh has also been cast to play his Bene Gesserit-trained daughter, Princess Irulan. Her role in the novel is unique, as excerpts from her written works serve as an introduction for various chapters of the book. Her writings are presented in the form of diary entries and historical commentaries. Though these passages teach us more about the writer herself, they also serve to enhance our understanding of this strange and complex universe. Like her father though, she doesn't make a physical appearance until later in the story. However, previous adaptations have also taken the creative liberty to increase her screen time because of the significant role her historical works play in the story of Dune and the character's increasing importance in the Dune saga itself. David Lynch's 1984 version opened with an extensive narration by Princess Irulan, played by Virginia Madsen, as she sets the stage for the universe of Dune. In the Sci-Fi Channel miniseries adaptation, this role, filled by actress Julie Cox, was given an extensive subplot where some of her actions were taken from other characters in the novel, namely Lady Margot Fenring. However, it doesn't appear this will be the route that Denis Villeneuve takes in his adaptation, as it's recently been revealed that Leah Sedu is set to play Lady Margot, so it seems she will have her own distinct contribution to the story in line with the novel. However, at this time, there has yet to be an announcement regarding the casting of her husband, Count Hasimir Fenring, so I'm really looking forward to hearing who will play the other half of this enigmatic duo, as their actions taken on behalf of the agendas they serve are closely linked. Another reason for suspicion that we'll see an expanded role from those in the Imperial Court is because of the new addition to the filming locations for the sequel installment. For Dune Part 2, filming will once again take place in Budapest, Abu Dhabi, and Jordan. This time, however, the production will also be filming in Italy, which very likely will serve as the backdrop for the imperial homeworld of House Carino, Kaitane. I'm really excited to see how the seat of power is depicted and look forward to the opulence of the Golden Lion Throne. The crew working behind the scenes to bring Frank Herbert's story to life on screen have proven themselves quite capable of portraying the vastly different worlds. As a result, the first film won multiple Academy Awards for sound, score, editing, cinematography, production design, and visual effects. For the sequel, all of Denis Villeneuve's award-winning crafts team will be returning as well. We'll have to wait and see what they've created this time for the second half and conclusion to this epic tale when Dune Part 2 premieres November 17th, 2023. But I'm curious to know what you think about Dune Part 2. Do you have any story elements that you're looking forward to seeing from the second half? Are you particularly excited or concerned about any of the new additions to the cast? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe for more Dune and other sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. Thank you all so much for your support, and as always, have a very nerdy day.